But shalom, everybody. This is uh, Rav Shmuel with you with this week's uh, Torah portion. And that, of course, is, of course, <laughs> like, that's what I'm here for to tell you, right? What is the Torah portion? Well, it's Sav. It's the second portion of the book of Leviticus. Last week, we started in the book of Leviticus with Parsha Leviticus, right? It's Vayikra, and he called. And uh, Sav is the next step obviously so first of all happy Purim to all of you hope you enjoyed uh, our festivities we had our Megillah reading uh, Saturday evening and we had our Purim carnival Sunday afternoon and you know it's great to see people joining in and having fun and uh, just enjoying the festivities it's great we have kids you know we had a magician here and we had a lot of kids here and you know door by door generation to generation um, Judaism really is very much about the children, right? Because they are the ones that are going to take over after we're gone, and we do things for the kids. That's what that's what it's all about. So, good stuff, good stuff. Okay, so Leviticus is, by all accounts, very boring to a lot of people because it's basically a manual. It's a how-to for the Levites and the Kohanim how to engage and how to perform the various uh, sacrificial rituals that basically was Judaism back then. And uh, yeah, I've said this before, but I think it's uh, it's worth repeating that the Judaism in the Torah is very different from what we do today. In fact, if you were to go back in time and take a priest and put that priest, put him, it is a him, Uh, today, they might not even recognize what we do. Back then, they had some prayers that accompanied uh, their their procedures, but most of it was the sacrifice. So we have, there are people that feel that when the third temple is built, and notice I saying when, not if, because I believe it's something we need to do. We need to have a central temple. I don't know that we're going to be doing the sacrifices the way we did it back back then, 2000 years ago. There is a, uh, I don't know if you call it a tradition or a minhag, which is the Hebrew word for something that you do, kind of like a tradition, but it's your procedure and it differs sometimes within, of course, the bounds of Torah. But they say that when something in Judaism is done for a long period of time, And it's done that way because the rabbis have taken a look at it and said, okay, this is the way we need to do things. Case in point, why do we observe two days of Passover, Shavuot, and Sukkot when the Torah specifically says one day? Why is Passover in Israel seven days and Sukkot as well seven days, whereas out here in exile or in the diaspora, it's eight days. Why do we add the eight day? Because back then, the news was the news traveled by messenger today it's instantaneous uh so they weren't sure if they're getting the right day so we better do two days putting a fence around the tower to make sure we get it right give ourselves 48 hours instead of 24. some people say you're adding to the Torah other people say no we're doing that to protect it so these days Uh, not just that we have the technology and some people may say, well, there are certain parts of the world that don't have technology that can't look up on www.hebcal.com, which is by the way, a great site to go for your, all your calendar needs to find out exactly when it is and when exactly the Molag, which is the exact point of the new moon when it is the new moon. And that's how, you know, it's the new month. Uh, but about, oh gosh, I want to say about 800 years ago, I think it was my modnies that basically standardized the calendar anyway, so we don't need to be looking at the moon to figure out when the month is. They also say that, you know, if you know when certain months are uh, by the moon, you know when other months are because it just follows, you know, you got 28, 29, 30 days, whatever, 29, 30 days of the month, so you know kind of when it is. But the point is, is that now that we have standardized the calendar and now that we know exactly we have the scientific instrumentation to know exactly when those new months fall why do we need to still do the two days because we've been doing it for so long well 
Okay, let's get into Talmud now, because Talmud is all discussions and uh, I want to say arguments, but in a good way. So if we've been doing without sacrifices for 2000 years since the, since the temple was destroyed, and I say temple as opposed to synagogue, some people refer to their synagogue as a temple. Um, it's not the temple. When we say temple, we mean the temple with the capital T, the one that existed in Jerusalem. All right, but we've been without it for 2000 years, haven't done sacrifices, we've done prayers. So why not just continue doing the prayers with the synagogue as we've done in our synagogues? Some people say, no, we got to follow the Torah. And it goes back and forth. The, but Sav basically is, and we'll come back to this, this is a pretty interesting discussion. There are some people that are very opposed to the idea of butchering animals. Um, but, you know, you go to a, I mean, we eat steaks, you know, the animals are butchered, right? Or slaughtered and they're doing it and they're done ritually. So what's the difference if we do it in a butcher shop and you go where you go get your meat or if we do it in the synagogue, some people may say, or the temple rather, some people may say, well, you know, doesn't that make the temple kind of, I don't know, with all the meat and whatever else? Well, yeah, it does, but that's what they did back then. So some people feel we've evolved beyond that. I happen to agree, okay? I think that we did sacrifices back then because that's what the other nations did and we were showing them how to do it right. Now, everybody's into prayers. And again, we do it a certain way. Uh, we pray to the one true God and you know we're supposed to be a light among nations. So we have to do it, quote unquote, the right way. Not that everybody's wrong, but we're supposed to, as a light, guide people toward Hashem. That's part of our mission. Uh, that may not sit well with certain people, but you know, we, we take our purpose seriously. So <laughs> um, let's talk about Sav a little bit more. So again, it's a manual for the Levites to perform the sacrifices. There are basically four sacrifices, okay? So you've got the burnt offering, which was done every day. The whole animal goes up in smoke. And that's just to be close to God, all right? So it's an acknowledgement of God. And here you go, here's everything and, you know, our gratitude. Then you have a peace offering, a Thanksgiving offering. Somebody escaped uh, a dangerous situation, like a, a, a sea travel, or they recovered from an illness. Now today we say the brakat hagomel, which is the, ble the the blessing for Thanksgiving, and we do this usually on uh, Shabbat during the Torah service. Somebody has an operation, it's successful, or what have you. Uh, they say that that blessing. The, back then, they used to do a sac. You'd come to the, the temple. You'd bring uh, your choice of sacrifice. You have certain choices based on your wealth or lack thereof. And you know you, this is how the Kohanim and the Levites ate. They they participated. Whichever group was uh, watching the Mishmeret that week got to partake in the food. And the other ones they had supplies anyway. But that was their feast. <clears throat> so that was another. Uh, sacrifice. The uh, Another sacrifice, the other two, were the guilt offering and the sin offering. So Rabbi Hertz makes a point of saying that the guilt offering is because of trespass. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so that's if somebody uses um, food that's supposed to be to room. It's pure food. It's really for the Levites. For some reason, they thought it was regular food. They ate it. They violated that. So now they have to bring an offering. And the other one's a sin offering in case you did something inadvertently. Uh, you, you, tr you, you transgressed a commandment uh, and now you've got to make, you have to make up for it. Now, today we do porn, we do pass up, uh, Yom Kippur, get my, get my uh, holiday straight, right? Today we do Yom Kippur or you can take on your own fast or there's ways to contribute to your synagogue or to a charity to do that. That's kind of like your sacrifice today. So there's various ways to do that. Um, the question is, what if you meant to sin? Okay, you want you know, Shabbat. I don't care about Shabbat. I'm going to go off and, you know, going to go have a cheeseburger with meat that hasn't been, you know, how do you atone for that? Well, you kind of don't. Uh, but some people say that if you're really sincere about it, Yom Kippur, that's really kind of the time. And yes, you really need to contribute in order to show your penitence. Because in Judaism, you don't get forgiven unless you really, really repent. 
And it's that way in the weekday Amidah. Oh, so you thought we only did that on Shabbat. No, we do that every day. And the weekday Amidah, the weekday uh, silent standing prayer has actually 18 or actually now it's 19 blessings. And after God's name, we ask God for knowledge. Uh, we say, please forgive us for any transgressions. And then we want to repent and we want to ask for redemption. So it's, it, it's a process. You don't just automatically get forgiven. People say, well, I forgive you. Well, what are you doing to be forgiven? You know, if you're just going to do it again, what's the point? So, but this is, this was the sacrifices that they did. And of course, we talked in Psalm, it's also about the anointing of the Kohanim, et cetera, et cetera. So that's this week's portion, Saab. We will see you in services, and there's about 30 shopping days to Passover. So get your Passover kosher food, and we will see you soon. Once again, thank you very much, and Shabbat Shalom. Bonsoir. Oh.